I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today we're going to look at the use of contractions in spoken English. A contraction is like a short form in speech. I've just used three examples. I'm for I am, where for we are, and I've for I have. English speakers often use contractions, so mastering them will help your speech improve. Our story today is about tourists helping scientists study whale sharks off the coast of Western Australia. Listen to this conversation and try to identify the contractions. So what sort of information are you recording in your log? Uh, the latitude and longitude, the depth, the time, the sex and any um, sort of interaction that the swimmers have with it. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. The difference is I suppose with scientific research you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks and then they leave. They might come here once every few years but when you've got well six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. Did you hear the contractions? The first speaker used three of them. Simon said, don't, wasn't, and wouldn't. Listen again. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them, and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here, we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. Don't is a contraction of do not. Wasn't is a contraction of was not. Wouldn't is a contraction of would not. These are all examples of a very common style of contraction, a verb and the negative not. Now listen to a tour guide, Steve Gibson, talking about the tourists who help study the whale sharks. He uses another type of contraction. Can you identify it? The difference is, I suppose, with scientific research, you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks, and then they leave. They might come here once every few years. But when you've got, well, six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months, then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. Steve says, you've got and they're out. These are contractions of pronouns with the verbs to have and to be. You've is a contraction of you have. There is a contraction of they are. We can also make contractions with nouns and other words. Let's look at a few. My brother's studying. Brothers is a contraction of brother is. Who's going out tonight? Whose is a contraction of who is. There's our bus. There's is a contraction of there is. When writing informally, for example in notes or postcards, it's fine to use contractions because they represent spoken language. However, if you are writing formally, do not use contractions. Remember that in formal writing, Words that are not in the dictionary should not be used. Finally, let's consider the pronunciation of contractions. Some are stressed and others are not. But just remember, the rules for stressing words can change according to context. Here's a guide. Contractions are stressed when they're formed from nouns, main verbs and negatives. For example, my brother's studying. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have. Contractions are not stressed when they're formed from pronouns and auxiliary words. For example, Steve says, when you've got boats here, they're out here every day. Notice that contractions cannot occur at the end of a sentence except for the contraction of a verb and not. For example, he's sick. Yes, I know he is. We cannot say, yes, I know he's. 
but we can say, I'm hurt. No, you aren't. Okay, now we're going to watch the story again. This time, listen for the use of nouns. So what sort of information are you recording in your log? Uh, the latitude and longitude, the depth, the time, the sex and any um, sort of interaction that the swimmers have with it. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. The difference is, I suppose, with scientific research, you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks, and then they leave. They might come here once every few years. But when you've got, well, six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months, then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. All the speakers use a number of nouns. In English, nouns are either countable or uncountable. That is, we can either count them or we can't. Let's look at countable nouns. Countable nouns are generally things like people, a teacher, a cook, a swimmer. Animals, a dog, a cat, a whale shark. Plants, a lily, a bush, a tree. Objects, a chair, a table, a boat. Units of measurement, a litre, a dollar, a cup. Uncountable nouns are generally more abstract and include things such as languages, Chinese, Japanese, German, emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, ideas, intelligence, luck, knowledge, Substances or materials like air, oil or rice. Countable nouns have two forms. They can be singular or plural. But uncountable nouns have only one form and cannot form a plural. Let's have a look at that. Chair can be singular or plural. Chairs. It is a specific concrete thing, so it is a countable noun. We can say, I would like to buy three chairs. However, furniture is an abstract noun. It has only one form and cannot be made into a plural. It is an uncountable noun. We can say, I would like to buy all that furniture. Using a word like all indicates quantity or amount. Listen to how Simon Stevens measures knowledge in this clip. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. He says an amount of knowledge. Knowledge is an uncountable noun. It can't be counted. We haven't got a specific number we can apply to define a quantity of knowledge. We use quantity words or measure words with uncountable nouns instead of numbers. We say an amount of knowledge, a cup of tea, a loaf of bread, a degree of happiness, a measure of luck, or a gust of wind. Okay, so today we've looked at different types of contractions and how they are stressed in phrases. And we looked at countable and uncountable nouns. If you would like to watch today's story again, Look at some study notes or do some exercises, you can go to our website anytime. It's at abcasiapacific.com slash study English. That's all for today. I'll see you next time on Study English. Bye bye. <laughs>